Hello everybody, I'm Brent Stapleton. I'm a software engineer at Edis Research, and today I'd like to talk about the Python API. Is there a clicker? Oh, there is a clicker. Right here. I think I got it. Here we go. All right, so uh, you may recognize this talk. I gave a similar one uh, last year as a lightning talk, but uh, we've had some improvements over the last year, and so I'd like to go over those. I'll start with the, the current status and what is the, the Python API. And we'll go over some uh, you know, applications that we've built so far and then end with uh, some possible applications. Uh, so the UHD Python API is a uh, multi-userp API exposure, exposure using uh, Boost Python. Uh, this is separate API from the GR UHD. Um, we expect very few use cases which mix the two. Uh, GR UHD and GNU Radio in general use SWIG um, which is not a dependency for UHD. We didn't want to add it, um, whereas Boost is already a dependency. Uh, so that worked out well for us. Uh, so currently, it is merged into the master branch of UHD. It's been in there since uh, the 3.13 release, so it's also available on the uh, maintenance branch there, although uh, it may not be packaged in every um, package that's distributed. Um, we're hoping to get it onto as many platforms as, as possible, uh, including Windows. Um, it's easiest to install on Linux, but um, we have got it to work um, in a Windows installer. There's still a few issues that we need to uh, iron out before we feel comfortable um, distributing that widely. Uh, so the first application that we really use the Python API for was uh, to calibrate the Coliseum, which was used in the uh, DARPA Spectrum Challenge. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Coliseum and the DARPA Spectrum Challenge, I'd highly recommend going and finding out more about it. Uh, it's, there was a lot of great engineering uh, done on it, and it was recently featured on the front of this month's edition of Microwave Journal. Uh, just a, a quick shout out there. Uh, for today's talk, I'll, I'll be focusing on a small part of it. Um, which was the calibration of a single uh, server that we, we had in Santa Clara. Um, so for the entire Spectrum Challenge, uh, it was a competition between uh, many different teams to share uh, Spectrum and you know, send their data over while not interfering with others. Um, so fairness was a, a really high priority. We wanted to make sure that all the RF channels were properly calibrated and no one had a, a leg up or a, a disadvantage in any like RF sense. Uh, so one, per, uh, one quad consisted of a, a server uh, connected to 32 USRP X310s. Each one of those had two daughter boards inside of it. Uh, so this may, meant that there were 64 um, TX and 64 RX channels per quadrant. Four quadrants put together made up the entire Coliseum, uh, and the entire thing had to be calibrated in order to ensure this fairness. Um, what I did to uh, you know, solve this was create a test framework which would send a calibration waveform from one TX port on an X310 to a neighboring X310's uh, RX port, uh, at which time that those samples were saved to file and sent off to um, a post-processing script to determine the fairness, uh, or the, uh, to calibrate that channel, rather. Uh, this was a lot of um, processing to be done and uh, had to be uh, rapidly iterated over. And so what the Python API really enabled me to do was to build UHD uh, one time and install it, and then only rerun and edit those Python scripts specifically. I didn't have to rebuild UHD uh, every time I, I wanted to rerun the test. And that meant that I ended up spending most of my time writing code and running code instead of twiddling my thumbs, uh, building and, and installing. Um, so uh, another similar application is uh, the Edis Research Continuous Integration. Um, right now, we have a, a series of tests that we do for our release testing. Um, one such test is the phase alignment test. This is to ensure that our devices uh, maintain phase alignment over um, multiple retunes and in various situations. 
Uh, and right now it's all built with GNU Radio, which works very well. You know, there are great signal processing blocks in GNU Radio, but for our particular application, uh, for release testing, we need to, if we ever find an issue, go back and revert to older versions of UHD and find out if those issued, issues existed then. And this means that we end up rebuilding UHD a bunch, and then on top of that, uh, GNU Radio. So this is obviously um, a big time uh, suck for us, and uh, just in general, uh, having extra dependencies in your continuous integration is a little... Um, not optimal. So what we're working on right now is moving all of this to uh, our Python API. Um, so phase alignment is a, is a good example for this because the actual algorithm to determine whether or not your signals are phase aligned is, is fairly simple. Uh, you just take one uh, sample stream and you multiply the, by the complex conjugate of your other sample stream and that'll give you a complex number which you can take the angle of and if that angle is constant over the entire sample, then um, you know, your two streams are phase aligned. There are a lot of you know, other um, uh, things like that. You need to have uh, synchronized streams and you may need to adjust for uh, gain values on the two, but uh, you know, NumPy can do all of these things. We don't need to, to run the GNU Radio scheduler and uh, extra overhead for that. Uh, so one test that I've been doing recently is just with two usurp X310s with a single daughter board each. They're synchronized with an octoclock. Um, and the, the test, the one test that I ran uh, displayed here, we can see the in-phase components of the two channels, which are time-aligned uh, upon receipt. And um, as we can see visually, they appear to be phase-aligned across the entire run. Um, and if we do the, the line of NumPy that I, I showed on the previous slide, uh, the phase difference between those two channels does remain constant over our entire run. And in fact, the, the deviation over it is less than a degree, which is pretty good for considering, um, you know, this is just set up on my desk and uh, isn't, hasn't really been tuned. Um, so this is, was uh, done much quicker than running the entire GNU radio. Um, flow graph to, to do phase alignment. Um, and we hope to, to get this into our CI system as soon as we can. Um, there's also a few other uh, tests that we could add that we don't currently. Uh, for example, gain settling time is, is one such um, application. We, uh, as we can see here, I, I ran, or yeah, I ran a test where um, using time commands, we receive samples, and in the middle of that receipt, uh, change the gain settings on one of the channels. We can see that the, the gain overshoots a little bit, but then uh, it takes a little bit of time to settle back down. And as long as that settling time is within acceptable ranges, uh, the test would pass. Um, there's also some other fairly simple um, applications which we could add to our testing system, such as spur detection, or anything else that requires just pure Python uh, modules and a, a small amount of um, processing. Uh, so another one of, um, so you may remember from last year's talk, I also went over uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, running the Python API in that. Uh, the extra little thing this year is that I got it running on the uh, usurp N310 that we've just released in embedded mode. Uh, obviously, the processing, is, uh, the processing power on the zinc is a little less than you'll have on a, a host machine, but um, it does work. It doesn't work by default in the file systems that we ship, but if anyone wants this kind of mode, uh, reach out to us and we can figure out the, the best way to enable it for you. Um, so specifically what I did was I have an N310 on, on my desk and I installed uh, Jupyter and NumPy on it and we can run the Jupyter Notebook server uh, in embedded mode on the device. Um, we can then, and th this is running in, in headless mode, so it doesn't like uh, open up the browser by default. We can then do some port forwarding from the host machine to our uh, embedded device, and then run our, our browser uh, to connect to that Jupyter Notebook server. Uh, all of the Python that's running on 
the uh, server is actually running on the uh, device, so it's a little slower, but it does work. Uh, so to be clear, the uh, server is running on the device, and the uh, Jupyter notebook is actually was on my desktop monitor, which is you know easy to use. Uh, so we hope to um, enable everyone to kind of explore a lot of these uh, Python modules that are out there. Uh, we think that the Python API is a is a great way to um, look at all of these modules and uh, you know, explore whatever application you need without having to cross language barriers manually um, or you know, concoct any of your own form of inter-process communication. Um, you know, these are obviously very popular, or some very popular modules, but your uh, applications may use others. We hope to, to you know, uh, see what you guys can do. Uh, so, kind of in summary, um, the UHD Python API has been available since UHD 3.13, uh, but you may need to enable it manually through some compiler flags um, or find a distribution that uh, works for you. Um, it's not a complete replacement for GRUHD or GNU Radio in general, uh, but it does have some clear benefits for simple DSP and uh, non-streaming examples especially, although um, we do have examples shipping with it that um, use multi-threading and uh, streaming should work. Um, it's just you may have to use your own uh, buffering. Uh, we gotten, we've gotten a lot of good feedback over the last year and uh, longer from uh, some GitHub issues that we've posted. Um, please continue to, to give us usage questions on the mailing list, um, or if you find bugs with the Python API, uh, please report them on the, our UHD GitHub issue tracker. Uh, thank you for your time. Do we have any questions? Uh, we have. Sorry. Uh, I uploaded last month into Debian Experimental a UHD package uh, that emits a Python 3 UHD. New package, it's a new processing for Debian right now, so hopefully with the next Debian uh, release, you'll, this will just be built in as the Python 3, since during the time that that next release will be stable, Python 2 will go away, I figure everyone will be happy enough to have it supporting Python 3, so it's yeah. coming. Yeah, uh, the Python API is also uh, Python 3 compatible. Um, I forgot to mention that, but it, it works. Um, we do have some CMake issues to, to work through right now, uh, but uh, hopefully we can clear the, all of those up. Hi. Uh, do you know if uh, the current version allows you to set and read uh, FPGA registers? Set and read FPGA. Uh, I don't believe so. It's a multi-user API, and um, there's a number of other you know, UHD functionality that we could expose. Um, if that's something that you'd like, please reach out, and we can, okay. we can see if it's possible or uh, appropriate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Brent? Are you pointing? Oh, yeah, great. Does it support the user I/O pin, say, like on the front of the X300, and does GRUHD support that? I couldn't find it in there if it did. Uh, the GBIO pins on the front of the X310, you said? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that the Python API or GRUHD support those. Although um, you may want to reach out afterwards, we can talk offline. Any other questions, Bob? Are you mic'd? Great. Any other questions for Brent? Nope? Okay. Thank you very much, Brent.